Firstly, I just want to shout out Ben Affleck for getting Dunkin Donuts two days in a row and still looking like a bowl of shredded wheat. Hashtag Jimspiration. Secondly, we have a lot to talk about in regards to the current Batman situation. Now, I've been holding off on talking about this because for 2021, I want to do more substantial videos than just here's the headlines and reading out someone else's article. I will be doing that in this video, but it'll be more in depth, I promise you. Now the situation was obviously going to hit boiling point and I just wanted to come in with a cool head, tell you what's been said and what I've heard is really going on. If this is your first time here then welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Paul, aka the guy who prefers to do the breaking of news in person, but may this will have to do for now. Okay so over the Christmas holidays, high ranking Warner Brothers head Walter Hamada had an interview with the New York Times in which he discussed the studio's plans for the future and where things will be going. Warner Bros basically broke the internet by announcing that their theatrical slate was dropping on HBO Max and along with talking about this he also detailed where things would be going with the upcoming DCEU and other DC properties. During the interview Hamada said, To make all these storylines work, DC films will introduce movie audiences to a comic concept known as the multiverse, parallel worlds where different versions of the same character exist simultaneously. Coming up for instance, Warner Bros will have two different film sagas involving Batman, played by two different actors, running at the same time. Not sure if he talks like that, but let's pretend he does. Now this caused a lot of speculation with people jumping at who it could be and what it meant for the future. Ben Affleck's name was thrown in, Keaton was dropped as well, and there was even some speculation that there would actually be a Batman Beyond. Since then though, the journalist behind the interview, Brooke Barnes, has clarified that Hamada was referring to both Robert Pattinson and Michael Keaton. Multiple outlets ran this story and built upon it by saying that Ben Affleck would return for the Snyder Cut and the Flash and then he would pass the torch to Keaton who would then take over the mantle once more. From this position he would act as a Nick Fury figure that oversaw the DCEU and this would allow him to become somewhat of a mentor figure that could usher in heroes like Batgirl and Batman Beyond. Everyone went absolutely mental with hardcore Batfleck fans saying it was fake news and people who think Batfleck is fully out saying that this just confirmed exactly what they knew all along. However, Brooke Barnes took some time away and has came out and said the following. Been offline, in brackets moving apartments, and return to see this Michael Keaton craziness. I was referring to the one film that Keaton has been announced as being in. Not a set of his own Batman films, you bloody dingus. If I had info on him beyond The Flash, I would have obviously put it in my article. Struth. Again, not sure if he sounds like that, but pretend he does. Now, obviously, the big question on everyone's lips is still, what's your new apartment like and, and when, when's your house party, Brooke? The question following that is obviously, okay, so is Ben Affleck out and has he been dunked in donuts? Or, or you know, words to that effect. Now, whilst we still don't have confirmation on this, I'm going to tell you what I've personally been told by a reliable source. Now, this person wants to remain anonymous and I don't want to get anyone in trouble, so it's definitely not my uncle who works at the Warner Brothers store in the Metro Centre, Newcastle. Now, from what I've been told, Ben Affleck is down for returning and that he's up for continuing as the character in one form or another. This is a sentiment that's shared by Joe Manginello as well as Jared Leto. Jay Diggy recently even told Variety that he was down to return as the Joker at some point and as we know from the leaked information on the Snyder Cut, he will be reprising his role in an additional scene. So they all want to do it, however from what I've been told it's actually Warner Brothers that are in the way and currently they want to hold off and see how the Snyder Cut does before moving forward. No one has signed anything yet and though there have been ideas put in place, the reason that actors like Affleck and so on are still regularly taking other projects is because they aren't holding off on their career on the off chance that something goes ahead. I found out about this last month and I've held off on reporting it for a while now as like I said I wanted to see how this story developed. The funny thing is that I was actually talking to Brooklyn Batman on Twitter about it yesterday and as I told him I get so many rumours thrown at me I tend to just wait to make sure they're accurate rather than simply trying to be the first person out on the story. Now I do take this with a pinch of salt and if you disagree, yeah, that's cool. As I said at Brooklyn Batman, it's not something I'd put money on and to me it's solely a rumour right now. 
However, it does make sense that if the Snyder Cut is successful and Ben wants to do it, that they would get him back. From my own personal point of view, I'm still 50-50 on whether this is true or not. I just thought I'd tell you what I'd heard. I know the cultured nerd, Lightcast and War Stew have backed this story a lot longer than I have, so full credit to them if it turns out to be right. Now, I would obviously love to see Ben back, and this kind of segues into another of the big talking points, which is that Hamada said the Snyder Cut would end up going nowhere. Before we get into that though, I just want to remind you that on the 30th of January, we're giving away three copies of The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings 4K box set to our subscribers. All you have to do to be in with a chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on, and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the story. The winners of last month's competition are on screen right now, so if that's you, then message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers, and best of luck to everyone who takes part. Okay, so back to Hamada, and when going over the ramifications of the Snyder Cut, he said the following. At least for now, Mr. Snyder is not part of the new DC film blueprint, with studio executives describing his HBO Max project as a storytelling cul-de-sac. It's a street that leads nowhere, you bloody dingus. Now this statement, in my opinion, is a really stupid thing to say, even if it's true. This is like an actor coming out promoting a superhero movie and then saying, look, it's not going to go anywhere, there's not going to be any sequels after this, it's pointless getting invested in it, don't waste your time. Hamada is supposed to be promoting the project and to come out and say that it's just a dead end seems super short-sighted. A lot of casuals will probably now think, well, there's no point in supporting this thing as even if it does make money, it's not going to continue, so instead, I'm just going to continue giving my money to Disney. Now as we know the studio has spent an additional 70 million dollars on this project and it doesn't make any business sense to me to invest all this cash when you have plans of it going absolutely nowhere. Zack's original assembly cut was very close to completion and they could have just tweaked the visual effects on that and put it out without spending the budget of what the original Deadpool movie had just to simply tweak things. As mentioned earlier, there's also been some scenes filmed on top of what was already part of it, and to me at least, it makes zero sense to film these which set things up for the future just to mothball it, a la Bruce Wayne style. Now, Kevin Smith talked about this in depth with Mark Bernard on his show Fat Man Beyond, and he seemed as bewildered as I am. Let's play the clip. I don't know why I'm, who I said that when I'm talking to, I'll, I'll be the one editing in it, but play the clip to, to myself. Snyder Cut. Um... DC Films told the, 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 uh, the, the Times that that is a storytelling cul-de-sac, a street that leads nowhere. Wait, in other who words, told you this? DC Films told the, the New York Times that the HBO Max event, the, the Snyder Cut, is a storytelling cul-de-sac, a street that leads nowhere. In other words, the Snyder Cut is not part of the DC Films blueprint that's been discussed here. Um, just out of curiosity, why would you say that why would one feel the need to put that out there before this thing even happens because what if it you know fucking takes the world by storm in march and people are like we want fucking more and shit what they're saying like no there won't be more because i happen to know that the ending that he's got for the snyder cut is very not much not a cul-de-sac <laughs> um, it takes it to a weird neighborhood, but it's not a cul-de-sac. You can keep fucking going with the story based on what I've heard um, from, yeah. from a friend. So I mean, it's, it, it's weird also given the fact that most of the actors who are in the mainline DCEU came from that. You know, so you're not going to recast Jason Momoa. You're not going to recast Gal Gadot. You know, there's going to be more Batman. Um, who knows? I still... I still am I'm, I'm uncertain about Ezra Miller going forward, even though Warner Brothers seems, you know, locked and loaded and ready to go with him. So there's always going to be a strain of the Snyderverse because these are the actors who populated it. Um, but whether or not they're going to give Zach more license to make more Justice League movies, I think is the maybe not. But again, like why say that now? Like I would hedge my bets and wait until March and the tale was told, you know, cause that way if, if the audience, let the audience decide, like if the audience is like, we want fucking more, man, then you, you know, you, you don't have to go back on what you said. Like apparently it's not a cul-de-sac, let's keep going. 
Okay, so yeah, he, he seems as lost as I am. Now, full spoilers for what we know about the ending of the Snyder Cut. So if you don't want to know what the cliffhanger is, then I recommend that you skyhook your way out of here before it gets ruined. If you're still here, shout out to yourself, and the movie will apparently end with a five-year time jump that will pick up in the Nightmare timeline. In it, we will see Batman, Joker, and Deathstroke, along with The Flash and Mira. Darkseid has completely destroyed the planet, and the movie ends with Batman saying he's coming, which is when we cut to black. This is why we have a nightmare version of Deathstroke, and no, that Leto is going to be a road-weary version of the Joker. So I just have no idea why they would even bother filming this cliffhanger and spending all this money just to simply stop things there. Now personally, I think that Warner Bros are still very bitter about the release of the Snyder Cut, and it seems like they've just deliberately cut off their nose to spite their face when it comes to Zack. They seem to just be wanting to release this to shut people up, and then hoping that the fan outcry goes away, but if the movie is popular, it just makes absolutely no sense not to pursue this. Now we did hear from Scott Snyder at CCXP that he had been approached about continuing the Snyderverse in comics, but that due to his schedule, he wasn't able to commit to it. So there are things in place for the universe to continue, but I actually think that it will go beyond this. If the Snyder Cut is successful, I can see them continuing the Nightmare version in either a live action HBO Max show, or at the very least, an animated series that lets them continue the journey. We've seen how things like this worked for the Clone Wars and Rebels, and they ended up opening the door for other things down the line. DC has a whole host of animated movies as well, and it wouldn't be too much of an ask for the actors to do voiceovers over these sort of things should it ever come to it. However, I do think that if the Snyder Cut makes bank and gets a ton of signups, that Warner Brothers would be stupid not to continue it in some form or another. This is why Hamada's comments make no sense to me, and why I'm kind of torn over what I've been told as well as what the public's being fed. Anyway, that's the news, what I've heard, and what I personally think about the whole situation. I'm sure you guys have a lot to say too, so make sure you comment below and let me know. The links to our socials are in the description, and you can also support the channel by clicking the join button, and as a thank you, you get videos like this early. If you want something else to watch, then make sure you check out our breakdown of the 75 best easter eggs in Cobra Kai Season 3, which will be linked on screen right now. We've, we've made a whole thumbnail with an arrow and a circle in it, so you know you better click it if, if you love that show as much as we do. Anyway, with that out of the way, thanks for sitting through the video, yeah? I've been Paul, I'll see you next time. Happy New Year as well. Peace.